Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym. Hi there, a very warm Wednesday. Welcome to the Racing Post Golf Postcast. I'm Bruce Millington, and the team are back in the groove. Steve Palmer has returned from his Florida adventure, and he and Paddy Powers in McLaughlin join me to look ahead to a great weekend of golf. We've got the final event of the, of the uh, US Tour, the FedEx Cup, whatever it is. It's the Tour Championship, 10 million quid up for grabs. And we've also got the European Tour down in beautiful Portugal for the Dom Pedro, no, not for the Dom Pedro, at the Dom Pedro Victoria Golf Course is the Portugal Masters. Um, before that, we will get stuck into everyone's questions. Uh, and first of all though, Steve, welcome back. Been away for a couple of weeks. What would you give the Disney World experience out of uh, 25? Out of 25, I would give it 22. I mean, it's an absolutely amazing place. It's uh, known as the Magic Kingdom, and it is a, it is a truly magical place. Um, obviously, you've got to go with your children. I think if you went on your own, you'd find it a little bit tedious after a while. But if you've got a young child, you know, they, they get well into it. Um, Grace was loving it. So, yeah, I'd say... The start of it, I would have given it a 25, but the the heat, the Florida heat, gets a bit suffocating. By the end of the, uh, the by the second week, I was really struggling to keep pace. I mean, it's a real real test of stamina. Are you basically um, going to a fun fair every day for two weeks? Yeah, you are, you are, oh. because we had a ticket for nine. We were there for ten days. And we had a ticket for nine different parks. Um, so you, it was a really quite intense schedule. Um, and Grace yeah, you, being quite young, presumably you couldn't really go on any white knuckle rides as such. You were restricted to sort of well, teacups and like, weren't you? Well, this is it. I mean, I, I did few, do quite a few rides on my own. Um, the, the, the single rider. There's, there's, a, there's a group of people at these theme parks. The, the single rider weirdos. You know, you yeah. uh, you get a lot of grown men that go to theme parks on their own. They are quite odd. I basically had to join that queue quite a lot. Um, because, you know, the wife looked after the baby and uh, we swapped it. The wife did a few rides. What was the um, banter like in the single rider queue? Little well, awkward, yeah, or? yeah, it's quite scary. I mean, you've got, you got people from all over the world going in the single rider queue. I, I met a nice Dutchman before a, uh, for one of the rides and he's he just there on his own. He's come all the way from Holland to ride on rides on his own. I mean, you do fear for your safety a little bit in those in those queues. Mm. But, um, um, yeah, but, but, I, I, but what was Grace's favourite bit? That's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, I mean... I would have paid all my money for the moment where we, we, we were first walking in the Magic Kingdom. We were walking up that sort of iconic path towards the palace there. And she said the words, I can't stop smiling. Oh, yeah, yeah. It brings, a, brings a lump to my throat just thinking about it. I mean, yeah, you, you, you literally would pay all your money in the world to hear that, wouldn't oh, you? Oh, how lovely. Um, so that, that, that made it worthwhile. But, um, and yeah, which yeah, golfers I, I, funded that for her? Who will you, when she's grown up, who will you, will you be showing pictures of <laughs> certain golfers and saying? I suppose remember? Patrick Reed, wouldn't it? Patrick Reed, Bryson yeah. DeChambeau, um, those those sort of fellas. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, te I'll teach her to love Patrick Reed. How the most lovely. lovable man in the world. But um, yeah, yeah. So God nice. bless America. I say, God bless America. It's a lovely country, isn't it? I, I know this is not what you want to hear before the Ryder Cup. No, uh, I, I, but, I always um, said that. The first time I went out to America, everyone was like, oh, they're really false, you know, it's all completely artificial. I just found them the most courteous people. Absolutely, absolutely. They're just really nice, aren't they? I mean, the, yeah. the customer service is, is their ethos, and um, so I'd much rather go uh, go out and uh, have people saying, have a nice day. And be, yeah, every one of them was just ridiculously nice to me. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Well, What's we discovered that? that 10 years ago. Do you remember? It's exactly 10 years that you and I were out in um, uh, Louisville, Howard. wasn't it? For, for yeah, the yeah, that's Cup. right. That's Everyone right, was yeah. very friendly there, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't find it difficult at all. I know people will say it's annoying, blah, blah. It's, it's nonsense. I love it. They're, they're such a friendly bunch. And they, the, the portions that they hand out as well, I mean, yeah, the incredible portions. I mean, you're basically banned from having one scoop of ice cream on your cone at the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> I, I asked for one scoop of ice cream, and they just looked at me like I'm some <laughs> kind of lunatic. <laughs> you know, two giant scoops come out, and then I, I walk out into the heat, and they and basically melt anyway. over your wrist. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, but the, and they have cheese on everything. It's another good thing about America. They they, they insist. They, ice cream is about the only thing they don't have cheese on. Great. Uh, they love a bit. Love a bit of cheese. No, I, I I thoroughly recommend America uh, to anyone who uh, hasn't taken the plunge yet. Beautiful. Okay. Well, while you've been swanning around in Florida, Ian's been hard at it, uh, trying to make Paddy Power some money, trying to make himself some money. Were you successful last weekend? Uh, for Paddy Power, we were set to making money. Myself, no, um, it wasn't. It was a very quiet week in terms of stake and plans for myself. But uh, yeah, no joy on no. the uh, tip in front. No. Oh, we, all we had was the Dutch Open, wasn't it? That was it. Yeah, it was very, uh, very low fare, and, and with that sort of field and those sort of quality of player, it wasn't a week to get heavily involved or heavily behind anybody. Were you pleased with the uh, with the way the playoff went? 
in the Dutch Ooh, Open. Yeah, it was yeah. fine. There was it was much for much as really. As I said, I wasn't the only one who dialed back on stakes and dialed back on everything for the week. It was just a quiet week really. The two lads would have been decent results for us in the okay. end. So yeah, nothing, <coughs> nothing major. Well, this is a week for proper betting. But before we look Big at time. the two tournaments. Let's have a few questions. We've got best bets for the Ryder Cup. We won't do that just yet, Charlie, because we're going to have a bumper Ryder Cup uh, postcast next week. Uh, Pete Selby. This isn't really golf-related. In fact, it's not remotely um, golf-related, but it is Disney World-related. Mickey Mouse. Mickey's a mouse. Donald's a duck. Pluto's a dog. What the hell is Goofy? Steve, did you discover the answer to that? Goofy? Well, he's a dog as well, isn't he? Oh, is he? Will yeah, you? yeah, I think Pluto okay. and Goofy are dogs. Yeah, yeah, they're just uh, diff- slightly different characters. Tony wanted to know what the cues for the rides were like. Well, we, we, we dealt with that. Who are Steve's... No, Ian, who are your top three golfers he's got his eye on for next season who aren't appearing in the top 30 this week? That's quite an interesting one. Yeah, there's one player who finished 31st. I don't know if anyone's heard of him. His name's Jordan Speed. Um, oh, you got to that. that. <laughs> yeah, I have indeed. But, uh, you uh, That's right. He gets Arrogant fined as well. Rascal. I think he's got <laughs> 20 grand. But no, serious. I think the three I would take would be one from the PGA Tour at the moment would be Bo Hostler. And then two coming through from the um, web.com would be PGA Tour regulars next season would be Sam Burns and Cameron Champ. Oh, Cameron Champ, so the Bo- Greyhound. Oh, yeah. yeah, so Hostler, Champ, and Sam Burns would be the three I'd take going into next season. Okay. Steve Brad asks. Do you think with the pressure of being selected for the Ryder Cup off, can Thunderborg Ollison get back to his best this week and blow them away? Why is he called Thunderborg? Thunderbear, isn't he? Thunderbear's his nickname. All right, okay. Must have been a misprint. Yeah, Thunderbear Ollison. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm surprised he's playing, really. I didn't think he needed to play in this. He's played enough golf, late, golf lately to um, have skipped this one. Um, Sergio needs the run, so that's why he's playing. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure about it. So all, all he'd be thinking about is Ryder Cup debut next week. I, I don't see how he can get his mind focused on this one. His course record is very poor at, uh, at the Victoria. So, um, yeah, he's obviously a runner, but I don't like him at the price. OK. Freddie uh, wants to... Freddie and uh, On The Nod, 25, both asking about Jason Day. Uh, on The Nod says, oh. firstly, Steve, I hope you're well. Second, it's time to give up on Jace Day for all our sakes. Yeah. Finally, yeah, yeah. what do you think the key is for Tiger finally getting over the line again? After the BMW win, it's not just a case of getting off to a good start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair question. I, I think we're coming um, to Tiger, aren't we? We will come to Tiger. I think he, he just needs some putts to drop over the weekend. I mean, I think his swing is absolutely sorted now. Um, so yeah, if he holds a few putts early on Sunday, gets that gets the swagger. Uh, I think that is probably the key. Yeah, the putter is the key to Tiger Tiger winning this week. Um, okay. yeah, Ian, uh, Ian, am I sorry, right in we'll thinking? Sorry, yeah. Ryder Cup. We will, like I said, we'll do Ryder Cup. In full next week, but am I right in thinking you're four places for um, top players next uh, on the? We right are, yeah, yeah. Again, we'll just be going bonanza. Wherever we, wherever chance we can go extra places, we'll just try to offer the best we can. So Brilliant. yeah, be four places. Yeah. So Jamie Wilson says, is there any each way filth out there for Paddy Power's four places? Uh, Steve, I guess you've come back, got off the plane, and you've you've just got your head down with this week rather than ride a cup, yeah, haven't you? Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, you know my feelings towards a ride a car. I'm more, I am much more interested in this week than next. But uh, yeah, I'll have a, have a look. For some each way filth next week. I mean, Paddy Power four places on the on the tops is uh, again it's incredibly generous. I mean, do you, do you ever actually make any money in your? Does your company actually make any money on? They're just uh, they're just a punter's pal. I was I mean, going to say we're five places for the top points overall point score as well. So it just it just keeps going going and going. Yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah four on, on four for European, place. four for US, and five for the overall top point score. So and just quickly back to Disneyland. Mark wants to know Steve's favourite Disney character and why. Favourite Disney character would be uh, Tigger, Tigger the uh, Tiger, because yeah. I, I, I well, out of Winnie um, the Pooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were we were having breakfast in a character restaurant, and uh, Tigger Tigger turned up, and I just um, refer to him as Tiger all the time, just for my own uh, <laughs> titillation. So I, yeah, as he came out, I said, "Come on, Tiger, let's have a photo. Let's have a photo." And uh, oh. he, he, I don't know whether he was loving it or not, because they don't actually say anything; they just sort of do movements. But um, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd say Tigger was my favourite character because I could talk to him as if he was Tiger Woods. I remember someone telling me that he went to one of these theme parks and had a theme breakfast, and it was ruined because he saw the character. W- who was kind of not harassing them at breakfast but entertaining them at this breakfast he later saw standing outside with his like th- character's head off having a cigarette you oh. didn't have anything like that I bet it's all too professional no, out there for that no no it? no no you do have to worry sometimes we met Chewbacca we met Chewbacca in the Star Wars bit and then there was obviously another Chewbacca floating around outside so I just uh, moved Grace away from the, the other Chewbacca you do have to have your wits about you 
uh, if you want to keep the magic, you know. Mm, okay, and <laughs> just the very last one, best and worst ride. Best ride, Space Mountain. Uh, you're in total darkness. You're in space, looking at the stars, charging around a little sh little sh space shuttle. That was a mesmerising experience. The Harry Potter ride. A uh, little warning for anyone going over there. Just avoid the Harry Potter ride. That was the worst ride. I mean, it, it just absolutely destroyed me. Uh, on the penultimate day, um, I went on that one. I had, I'd had a hot dog before boarding. I had a half a jacket potato before boarding. Uh, but that wasn't the reason why it was so intense. Um, yeah, you go upside down. You're on the back of his broomstick sort of thing. You, you, he's a little wizard. You know Harry Potter, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's, a, he's a little wizard. You're on the back of his broomstick. You're going upside down a lot. You have lots of dragons firing fire at you, you know, and the 4D... It, it just completely destroyed Sounds me. And, and I, well, yeah, I mean, if, if you've got the stomach for it, maybe. But I, I would defy any man to come off that not feeling physically sick. I mean, I had motion sickness for about two days after that. It, it ruined the tail end of the holiday. And that, again, the single rider queue was the problem because the, the bloke, bloke who slotted in next to me on that one um, was completely unhinged. He's, he's, a, he's a typical crazy yank, like shouting stuff. It, it started off, he's straight away goes, yeah, baby! And... Um, he goes, woohoo! That's what I'm talking about. So I got, I got him next to me doing all that. Sounds well, like I'm you at Carnoustie. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sat in silence next to him, trying not to vomit. You know, it was a really difficult five, ten minutes, um, <laughs> and then two days of agony after that. So yeah, I, I'd avoid the Harry Potter ride. That's Universal Island, of, Universal Island of Adventures. If you, um, I, I can't see myself ever me. going. I, my kids are too old for it now. So I suppose maybe well, the grandkids. Yeah, you could go on your own, like go in the single rider queue. <laughs> no, 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 no. We won't be <laughs> doing that. Quickly, before we look at the tournaments, Ian, a quick blast of Ryder Cup betting, if you would. Sure. So currently the prices are 4 to 5 USA, Europe 11 to 8, and the tie at 10 to 1. OK, thank you very much. We will look at the Tour Championship in just a jiffy. Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym. OK, then, it's the Tour Championship at Eastlake Golf Club in Georgia. 30 runners. What's the latest betting? Ian McLaughlin. Uh, six places this week in the 30-man uh, Tour Championship. Uh, Rory McIlroy heads are betting at 15-2. to two. Dustin Johnson next in at 8-1. Justin Rose, 8-1. to one. Tiger Woods, 11-1. to one. Justin Thomas, 11-1. to one. Brooks Koepka, 12-1. to one. And 16-1 to one bar. Steve Palmer, friend of the postcast, Brendan Duke, said simply, Tiger, how far? What's the answer? Wow. I love that question. Yeah, I mean, a, a, the answer is a considerable percentage of the track. Um, I, 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 I fancy Tiger this week. Let's uh, light the candle, mashed potato, baba booey. The, uh, the, the time has come. It's been a long wait. 2013 Bridgestone Invitational, last time Tiger lifted a trophy. Um, but all the evidence suggests that uh, the, 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 the time is now. Uh, slowly but surely, he has re-established himself as... Uh, one of the best players in the world. Whether he can get right to the top of the tree again, I don't know, but I wouldn't rule it out because um, it's, uh, it's debatable whether anyone on the planet has hit their irons with more authority than Woods over the last three months. So his iron player has been, uh, has been vintage at times, particularly in the final round of the US PGA. Um, yeah, this is a long spell of form now from Tiger. Fourth place in the Quicken Lo Loans National, preceded sixth spot in the Open. Um, the US PGA effort, he's runner up there. And then last time out, sixth place in the BMW Championship. It's another hugely encouraging effort. Um, you know, to, I had a good look at that tournament when I got back from uh, from Disney, and um, couldn't believe how well he's hitting the driver now. You know, the driver w was the weakness. He's put a new sh he put a new shaft in the driver at the start of the playoffs, and now he's finding fairways with that. Um, it's um, it's all coming together for Tiger. Just that the putter needs to warm up. He keeps switching putters, but that 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 will happen. You know, Tiger Woods will start putting well again soon. Um, and his swing, as I said earlier, is absolutely in mint condition. He finished second for strokes gained tee to green in the BMW. Second for strokes gained on approach. And uh, yeah, the driving found 13 or 14 fairways in the final round of his last event, the BMW. Um, 16 out of 18 greens in regulation in, in two rounds, rounds one and round three. So I'm loving that. And I, I've had East Lake on my mind for a while for Tiger. Since the Open, East Lake was the one I, I had in mind for, for the next Tiger plunge. Um, he, he finished runner-up there three times before winning the tournament. He didn't just win the tournament, absolutely destroyed it. 2007, won by eight shots, uh, 23 under par effort. I mean, when you consider how difficult this course is. and Just 11 and years ago. Yeah, 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 but the, the, the winning score has been no better than 13 under the last 10 years, and, and he shot 23 under par. Um, it sounds like you're having a proper old dig this week, Steve, are you? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiger's Tiger's the main bet of the week by by a long way. Um, Will he pay for the Disney <coughs> adventure if he if he prevails? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I need to pay for the next one because the daughter's already moaning that every time she wakes up, she wants to go back there. Now. So, um, yeah, I, I need to win money fast, as, as always. And, uh, yeah, 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 certainly, yeah, yeah. The t- Tiger is a 30 bag. Uh, going for a 30, 30 bagger. bagger. Good luck yeah. with that one. Ian, what's your view on who will be lifting the trophy on Sunday? Yeah, so when going through it on Monday, I kind of narrowed it down to three players. The first one of those was Rory McIlroy, um, fifth last time out at the BMW Championship. Struck the ball so, so well. Was first in the following stats for the tournament. Strokes gained off the tee, strokes gained approach, strokes gained tee to green, driving distance, proximity to the hole. Now, the strokes gained approach and the proximity to the hole were the two key ones there, as he's been struggling with his irons and his wedges for about two months before the BMW. With that looking to be back on track, I think he's now primed to end the PGA Tour season with a win in four attempts at East Lake. He's had a second in 2014 and a win in 2016, sealing the uh, 10 million FedEx Cup bonus. He was my idea, the most likely winner this week. Okay, right, so it is Tiger for Steve and Rory for Ian. Let's run through who else uh, is in the staking plan. Steve, you first. Uh, Billy Horschel is my next best bet. Uh, That's another uh, former FedEx Cup champion. Horschel uh, carded four rounds in the 60s when he won the Tour Championship by three shots in, uh, in 2014. Uh, took the FedEx Cup as well. He finished seventh in his only other East Lake appearance, 2013. So the last time he played on this course, he dominated. And uh, recently, is, is some hugely encouraging goal from him in the last couple of months. Second in the Barbasol Championship at the end of ju- July. Was 11th in the Wyndham Championship, which is another Donald Ross course. Uh, same as East Lake, same designer. Uh, and in the playoffs, he stepped it up a gear like he often does. He was third in the opening FedEx Cup playoff event. And third last time out in the BMW. So this is a proven FedEx Cup performer. Loves the course. And, uh, yeah, Billy Horshaw will provide the biggest challenge to Tiger Woods. And then I've got one more. I'm going with three against the field. Webb Simpson. Uh, Webb Simpson is, um, you know, Eastlake's a great fit for Webb Simpson. He, he showed with his runaway victory at Sawgrass. Uh, he, he's well suited to tight, tough, water-strown layouts. Uh, he's been magnificent all year, really. And the uh, sixth place in the BMW last time out was was all I needed to get Simpson back on board. A pair of weekend 65s. Um, so, yeah, Woods, Horschel and Simpson, my three against the field. And Ian, you said you've narrowed it down to three. Rory is one. Who are the other two? The next one was actually Tiger Woods. I couldn't split the two of them, really. I think it's between the two of them this week. I, I, won't, add, I won't try and add too much of what uh, Steve's already said. Just the six last time out in the BMW included rounds of 62, 63. The iron play still at an elite level. Put an old shaft in the model of his driver. He knows to be able to keep the, uh, the ball and play off the tee. This obviously makes him now dangerous on any course he plays, let alone the ones that suit him like Carnoustie and Eastlake here. Uh, affiliation with the with Eastlake, Steve mentioned the eight-shot win in 2007. He's had four second-place finishes here also. I think a big factor as well is he's had a week off between the BMW and this, so he's had basically 10 days off. That'll help him after playing three weeks on the on the bounce. I thought he was the biggest danger to Rory. Uh, the next next best, we'll say, because it's not really an outsider, is Tony Finau, uh, the most informed player in the PGA Tour present. Second, fourth, eighth-place finishes so far in the playoffs. Gained the last captain's pick for the US Ryder Cup team last Monday, which will only instill him with more confidence. His putting is starting to improve, which has been his Achilles heel at times. Has ranked 12th, 6th and 15th in the putting figures in the last three tournaments. 7th here on debut in 2017. I think he's primed for a big week. Lovely. Steve, would you cry if Tiger won? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Feeling very emotional at the moment. Took, took Grace for a first day at nursery the other day and cried on the way home. So something's not right. Not getting much sleep. Um, yeah, I cry like a baby. Excellent. But nice I cry like tears. A baba, I cry like a baba boy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, nice good. tears. Yeah, nice tears. Yeah, tears of joy. Excellent. Um, Steve, out of all the... Because well, they're obviously all up there, all the, all the big guns except for Jordan. Is there anyone up there in, uh, at the head of the bet that you, you, you particularly dislike this week? Maybe someone to oppose in match bets or whatever. Uh, yeah, I think uh, maybe Dustin Johnson. Uh, he'd never really done anything fantastic at East Lake. Uh, he had a good, great chance of winning the FedEx Cup a couple of years ago and um, faded from the front, uh, blew everything, and perhaps not in the right frame of mind this week. I mean, I don't know whether you've been following his uh, relationship crisis. No. Um, I mean, he's been engaged to the lovely Paulina for, for, for ages, Is several years. Is that Wayne years. Gretzky's daughter? Yeah, Wayne Gretzky's daughter, oh, Paulina. I thought, I thought she's, that uh, moved on to marriage and everything, no? No, no, no. They've been engaged for absolutely ages. They've got two, two young sons, and uh, the marriage was always going to come at a time when um, it was suitable f- to, you know, to both of them, his schedule and whatnot. But unfortunately, it seems like the relationship's in crisis now. He's uh, uh, allegedly been um, getting too close to one of the uh, sort of golf groupies on the, on the circuit, and uh, she uh, has reacted by uh, deleting every Instagram image of him. Um, on her Instagram account, she's uh, 
she sort of wiped him out of her, her oh, Instagram right. account. That could, so could have ramifications for the Ryder Cup as well, couldn't it? If he's yeah, a, yeah. Well, I mean, Dustin's, a, Dustin's as cool as a cucumber and um, you know, doesn't let much bother him. But, you know, when, when the mother of your two sons is... Um, you know, wiping you out of her Instagram account. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than that. It certainly no, doesn't. No, he, he's, he's probably not in great frame of mind, I'd imagine. Where, where do golf groupies hang out? I mean, I, I've never seen oh, a golf groupie, have you? You should see it when I go to the Open. I've got, I've got a trail yeah, of them. Yeah, just in the crowd and um, that and just... Really? Hanging around. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, the players would be playing, going to the, maybe the local restaurants and bars and they'd, they'd just hover around there as well, I'd say. Good grief. Now, it looks like I'm speaking it's from experience or something. No, yeah, I just... you've got I just, to, <laughs> Blimey. Yeah, there's, one, there's one group that's been particularly pinpointed. If you go on, yeah. it's, it's, all, it's, it's, it's gone viral. It's gone viral. Okay, I'm not on Instagram. Are you on Instagram, Steve? No, 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 no. I meant if you just go on the internet and, and talk oh, right, about okay. the story, you'll, you'll learn all about it. A 39-year-old, yeah, uh, a diminutive 39-year-old seems to have turned his eye. Yeah. But this is all, you know, I must use the allegedly word. I don't mean... Of I course. don't know this for fact. I don't know this. Yeah. Lawyers are lawyers are watching. Indeed, or listening. Yes. Um, Ian, anyone you don't like at the top of the market? Yeah, DJ was the obvious one. I was going to say that if uh, Steve hadn't mentioned it, I think the personal issues are are a big a big thing this week. And the, the course record isn't great either. And he hasn't been playing that well through the playoffs. So he, yeah, he's the obvious one at the front end of the market. Okay, and obviously Paddy Power have pushed the boat out as always on the old derivative market. Steve, anything grab your eye at this juncture? Um. Well, you could just bat my guys finishing the top ten because uh, they definitely will. Okay, but if there's six places, you might as well go each way and give yourself a chance that they'll win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you could find a superior win price elsewhere, maybe on the exchanges, and um, and then have your top ten. But I, I, I like that tactic. I like that tactic in deeper fields. But yeah, in a small okay. field like this one, you've got to fancy your chances of getting one in the top six, haven't you? All right. Anything else, uh, Ian? Grab your eye on other markets. I'd say Rory in top European. I think he, it's between himself and Rose, and I obviously had Rory a lot shorter than Rose. So, yeah, 21 to 10 would also think that's a fair bet this week. Jolly good. Let's do Portugal next. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week, and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 18 plus, begumbleaware.org. Welcome back. It's Bruce Millington, Steve Palmer and Paddy Powers, Ian McLaughlin. We've done the Tour Championship. Now we're going to do the Portugal Masters at the Victoria Golf Club down in Villamora. What's the latest betting, Ian? Uh, six places again this week in the Portugal Masters. Lucas Beregaard heads a betting of 14 to 1. Thor Bjorn Allison, 16 to 1. Sergio Garcia, 18 to 1. Chris Wood, 18 to 1. Charles Swartzel, 18 to 1. Shane Lowry, 20 to 1. And 22 to 1 bar. Before we get the lads' tips, just a little thing I read this week that was quite interesting. I, I think the, the European Tour is in a slightly moribund state. I just think it's the same old players week after week. There's not a lot... Um, to get golf fans engaged with the players. Not, I wouldn't say there's no characters. I'm sure there's loads of characters, but they're just, there's no real star names. There's no charisma there. I read something that there's the possibility that they're going to open up the tour to uh, female players, which I think is an absolutely brilliant idea. They've got ladies' tees, haven't they? So it, it's perfectly handicapped. Steve, are you in favour of that idea? Oh, I'm a traditionalist, uh, Bruce. I, I don't want to be accused of being uh, sexist or whatever, but uh, no, I'd be very opposed to that. Would you? Uh, I, I'm very opposed to any change. You know, I don't. Uh, what in don't life? Change it. Um, yeah, yeah, generally, yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, I, no, I wouldn't like that. I, well, I wouldn't like that, and I, I, um, I, 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 I don't think uh, the tour's in as bad a state as, as you say. Well, I'm not I mean, saying they, it's they, bad, they, but they, I mean, the, the, the they, they, they play in the golf sixes event. They, they, the, the ladies of teams have been in that. I suppose they've got the um, stop clock open as well, haven't they? Yeah, they're, they're trying, they, aren't they? I think you, you, they, they played that European team championship thing the, the other day. That was that was mixed. I think you should have a few mixed events, but I don't want them destroying the traditional the traditional events. How and, would they uh, yeah, destroy it? Uh, <laughs> you old fuddy duddy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I know you're trying to get me in trouble here, aren't you? But, <laughs> Look, um, okay, we'll move no. on. Ian, yeah. are you as radic as uh, furiously opposed to the idea as Steve? I will be. I'm a I'm a purist. Oh, yeah. uh, like oh, this is kind of the great. <laughs> <laughs> like the tour still has May through to August of bumper events, and then they go to Dubai from January to February, and they have a nice finish here now from after Ryder Cup. Series coming out, yeah. You'll, you'll yeah, love the European tour in a couple of weeks when the, yeah. when the final series starts. That's top just a, It's just a quiet, quiet spell at the moment in terms All of right. the quality of events. Yeah, yeah. It's, I won't be too worried. Okay, you hideous sexist stick in the mud. <laughs> Your insistence that they should be out him doing the washing up. Oh, honestly, <laughs> sickening. Steve, who's going to win the Portugal Masters? Uh, Lucas Bejeregard is going to win the Portugal Masters again. He was a nice fifty to five to one winner for us last year. Um, we've got to take a third of that price this time, but I think that's fair enough because he was a maiden when teeing up 12 months ago and now he's a much more established 
uh, European Tour winner, and he's banging form in the last five months. He's posted six top six finishes on the European Tour, including his last two outings. His form figures of 9-6-2 coming into this week. He closed with a bogey-free 63 at Crans, then lost the playoff to Fitzpatrick. No disgrace in that, of course. Uh, Fitzpatrick made a birdie to win the playoff. He could leave Crans. Bedrogar could leave Crans um, you know, with great self-belief. Uh, he was an emphatic winner 12 months ago. He didn't just win. It was a four-shot romp. Never looked in any doubt. And uh, his previous two spins on the course prior to that were ninth and 12th. So this course is perfect for, for Bedrugard. He's in absolutely peak, peak condition. His swing's in fantastic order. He topped the greens and regulation stats at Kranz. Um, was fourth in the maiden Denmark for GIR. So, um, yeah, I, th- I thought Bedrugard should be clear favourite this week. And he, he, he wasn't. It was quite competitive at the head of the market. OK, do you fancy going to Kranz with me one year, by the way? It looks great, doesn't it? I just fancy I'd love to, perfect yeah, yeah. combination of mountain air and golf. Yeah, I do love a mountain. Should we I do it? Ma- yeah, let's do it. Pencil it in. OK. Jolly good. Ian, do you want to come? Yeah, I wouldn't mind going. Yeah, it, it looks, looks lovely, doesn't it? World. Yeah, yeah, for we sure. We should do it. Skiing, Ian. I've never done skiing. Skiing is overrated. Skiing was 15 or 16. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a big fan. Of overrated. Overrated. You did a bit of skiing, yeah. did you? Overrated. I did when I was younger, yeah. I did a kind of a yeah. school trip thing when I was like 16. I, Didn't I really take to it now. Too big of a... It's like Disney. One of those things, it's nice to do for a day, but you don't want to devote yes. a whole holiday to slithering down an Alp, do you? No. Ian, uh, Ian, your main tip for the uh, Portugal Masters is? Uh, main tip is Gavin Green. Uh, incredibly long hitter. Should be suited by the setup at Victoria. Lack of rough and space on the t- off the tee, sorry, will mean he can stay aggressive all week. The last time he played this sort of setup, he finished third at the Czech Masters four weeks ago. Twelfth at the the European Masters was just as impressive as given how tight the courses of Transfer Sierra. His long game stats are very impressive currently, primed for a big week, and I think he looks a very solid each way proposition around the 80 to 1 mark. And Steve, who are your other picks for Portugal? I've got three. Uh, Nacho Elvira is my next best. Um, Nacho Elvira has won four times on the Challenge Tour, three times he's finished in the top three on the European Tour, and uh, fourth place at Crans the week before last on a much less suitable course. I thought that was a very encouraging piece of form. Yeah, this this course, Victoria, is ideal for Elvira. He's an attacking slugger. He's uh, very aggressive. And um, he's finished ninth and seventh there the last two years. So, yeah, Nacho Elvira next best. And then I've got two others at massive prices. Sam Horsfield, player I've had my eye on for a while. He's only 21 years of age. He's already contended a few times on the European Tour. Finished second in the Tishwani Open at the start of the year. Uh, he's played well in, in, in really good, good company. He was 14th in the Arnold Palmer Invitational at Bay Hill. 15th in the BMW PJ Championship at Wentworth, and then more recently he was 10th in the Maiden Denmark. So, um, yeah, quality young player. Victoria looks ideal for him. And the other one was uh, Pachara Kongwat Mai, um, a, a young 19 year old Thai, uh, has been putting uh, superbly over the last month. Uh, he's finished 9th in the Czech Masters, 12th in the Maiden Denmark, 8th in 8th at Kranz, a uh, hole in everything. And, um, Last year, he tied for 12th on his Victoria debut. I think this track is uh, is ideal for him. He, he, he likes straight straightforward tracks at this stage of his career. Uh, and, and the key to last year, when he finished 12th on his Victoria debut, was that he'd missed he'd missed the cut in five of his previous seven tournaments. So it shows a real liking for the course when you come to a course in terrible nick and yet still finish 12th. Just say his name in case any listener is trying to scribble your tips down. Pachara Kongwat Mai. K-H-O-N-G-W-A-T-M-A-Y. Sorry, I at the end. Right, huh? Okay. <laughs> um, Ian, how many other fences have you got for this one, mate? I've got three more as well. I'll go through them quickly. Uh, the first one is Nino, Berta- Nino Bertasio. Um, three top 30s in his last four events. Another bomber who should be suited to the course. Incredibly long off the tee. His ability to make a lot of birdies. Was 12th here last year in a second start. Um, opened with two rounds of 65. I think he looked a very solid each way play at 100 to 1. Next one was uh, Hayden Porteous. In solid form the past six weeks. Sixth at the Nordea Masters and 16th at Kron Sierra the highlights. Two missed cuts of Victorian two attempts, but I think the setup is still prime for him. I just don't know, I can't put my finger on why he had the two poor tournaments. Second last week in the putting stats in the KLM Open. If you combine combine that putting with his advantageous length and solid iron player, 80 to 1 looks a very fair price. And the last one was another one Steve has with Sam Horsfield. I'll just briefly go through. Another who should be suited to the test. You have to go low this week. He went low, he went lowest, sorry, over six rounds of the qualifying school in Spain at the end of last year. Hugely talented players, having a very solid first season on the European Tour. 15th at Wentworth and second at the Shrani Steve mentioned being a highlight. Um, of course, it's going to suit long hitters and players will make a heap of birdies. I like this chances around 100 to 1 this week. Brilliant. OK, I think we should summarise the tips just so that everyone has got it nice and clear. We don't want anyone to miss any out. So, Steve, as clearly and concisely as you can, just r- remind everyone who your tips are for this week's two tournaments. 
Tour Championship, Tiger Woods, Billy Horschel, Webb Simpson, Portugal Masters, Lucas Bejerigard, Nacho Elvira, Sam Horsfield, Pachara Kongwat Mai. That couldn't be clearer. I think we need to do this every week. That's brilliant. Same with you, Ian. Tour Championship, Rory McIlroy, Tiger Woods, Tony Finau, Portugal Masters, Gavin Green, Nino Bertasio, Hayden Porteous, Sam Horsfield. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much indeed, lads. We'll be back next week looking ahead to the big one. It's the Ryder Cup. Hopefully Steve will have drummed up some enthusiasm for that. Steve, are you going to go for the old double this week, Tiger and Lucas Beregard? Uh, yes, yes, I have done that double with bells on. I mean, uh, the, the, the two that we both had, me and Ian, there were Tiger Woods and Sam Horsfield, weren't they? So maybe that double could be an mm. alternative double for, for the listeners. But Always so. good. I mean, if you're ever in betting, I think if you're ever going to win big for small stakes, I think the each way double, particularly now they're doing extra places, is a, is a you know, you have to go, you have to be prepared to go week after week without getting a pickup. But if you slot it, it's got to be, it's the best bet in the world, Steve, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your best chance of, of freedom. I and mean, you, you get these idiots going out buying a lottery ticket thinking that's a good idea that's not a good idea but if you have you have each way doubles on um, on some sensible golf selections that is a very good idea love that okay steve you're going postcast crazy today because you're back very soon with our champions league of darts postcast um, yeah yeah is that the first that? ever darts one is it yeah I'm looking uh, forward to that. Yeah. could well yeah, be yeah. I, yeah, I can't yeah, think no, who you're going to tip <laughs> well, you might be mistaken. Oh, mistaken. fair enough. I mean, well, no, no, you're not actually. We're not really people. branching <laughs> out, you know, because I did a, guess what I did yesterday? I did a Strictly Come Dancing postcast to my absolute wow, show. Wow, wow, we were. Mm. Who, who did you do that with? Uh, Lee Mottisett and Cat Fiddler. It's quite good. Cat so Fiddler, oh, I'll, I'll have a listen to that. Yeah, do. It's out now. Um, the Golf Postcast is obviously going to be out uh, now because you're listening to it. And Steve's darts one should be very soon. We've got football tomorrow, racing Friday. And if you can't join us for any of those, do please come back next Wednesday when Ian and Steve will be taking you through all the best Ryder Cup bets. Until then, goodbye. Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is The Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym.